Right, I'm going to do the swing arms on the motor guzzy today. Swing arm, just the one. And uh, now this is my problem. I'll show you. I've had a look. I've bought the manual. A lot. Okay. So you've got a bearing on one side. There's that side there that the drive shaft is in because it's a shaft drive. And we've got another swing arm, another side that's just there. Okay. So I've got bearing that side, bearing that side. Okay. Both bearings need lubrication. Okay. One goes in there and one goes in there. Now, this side here will not, this, this tube here with this joint in is full of oil. Okay. Is it oil or is it grease? Oh, no, it's grease. When I open this a ton, uh, I say when I opened this, when I dismantled this, a ton of oil came out. Now I thought it was out of this here. It was dripping out. Loads and loads of oil. Um, what looked like EP90 gearbox oil. But I'm just looking at it now. And it looks more... Oh, that's greased rather than oiled, isn't it? Okay, well that's good. That's good if that's greased rather than oiled. That means, yeah, at least a while. Anyway, the basic problem I was going to have was, do I grease both bearings before they go in, or do I just grease that bearing, because this bearing here will get some oil that's splashed out of this tube here. And I don't know the answer. And I have got the manual and I can't find it. It isn't in the manual. Look, it's a crap manual. It's a really crap manual. It cost me 50 bucks off eBay. Look, dude, I know you didn't write the manual. Look, hey, I know you weren't watching this, but it was crap. It was just rubbish. eBay manual and all it talks about is the font size. Um, it's just rubbish. Um, there's nothing on YouTube. I'm going to have to make it up as I go along. Um, there's very little point in asking on the internet. All I get is why it's crack answers normally on the um, Motor Guzzy page. It's like, oh, you should get the manual and follow it. Yeah, go to hell. Absolute nonsense. Um, so I'm gonna just going to have to work through it myself. If you do know the answers to what I should be doing, it's going to be too late because I will have done it anyway. But um, put your hand up and share your knowledge so that people like me don't have to guess. It isn't available on the internet. The answers to my questions are not available, or if they are, someone's hidden them. Okay? So they're not they're not anywhere near accessible enough. I'm gonna make well, here mine are. We're gonna fix this and I'm gonna make it accessible to anyone else to do the same. If you know the answers and you're keeping them to yourself, shame on you. I was wrong. I lied. There is somebody who'll help you. There is someone out there. Um, I have just rung Mario um, from Thunderbikes in Perth. And luckily, his customer, who he was serving at the time, was on the phone. So he had two seconds, and in two seconds flat, he told me what to do. So Mario says, no oil in there. Grease, grease, no oil. Oil in the, in the diff, oil in the gearbox. No oil. So, grease there, grease there, and then I will top up the oil in the gearbox and top up the oil in the um, bevel drive, whatever you want to call it. It's not really a differential, but everyone calls it a differential because it sort of looks the same. Um, so, you won't be watching this either, Mario, but thank you, thank you so much. Uh, I am passing on the information to everybody who wants it on the internet. Who knows, maybe they'll even subscribe. <laughs> when you're driving an oil seal back in, well, not when you're driving one, but when I'm driving one back in, I just use a big socket. Find a socket that fits right, and that's what I use, and I'll tap it in with that. So I'll just tap it there. Oh, 
Hang on, it's too big. Okay, that's not a problem. The principle's the same. I'm just going to find a socket that does fit and then use it to tap the oil seal in. This is the bit. Are you ready? So this is a spacer. Oh, let me put the camera a little bit further away. This is the spacer that fits in. Here's another one for the other side. They are the spacers. Here's one. There's one on the other side. There are the spacers that were missing that meant that this bike's been driving sloppily for a year and came to me for a song. Um, right, I'll put those two spacers in. I'm going to put it back together. Then I'm going to drive it. Uh, I won't go too far before showing you. So, that goes in there all the way in. Now, this was a pain in the backside. Obviously, I had to line up the drive shaft in there with the output shaft coming out the gearbox. Getting that lined up in there around the rubber, uh, inside the rubber gator and bearing this side and a bearing that side lined up um, was took some fiddling. But I can see already that either of them being tight that the slop has gone out of this back end and it's done the job. So I'm looking, I'm just gonna tighten those up now. I am going to use a vernier gauge to check that that is as far in as that before I put the lock nuts on. Okay, so what I should do is they've got a, uh, Allen inside there and they've got a hole so once I've got them to the right tension which I'm going to do by hand which is just going to be what I think is tight enough I'm going to hold this steady with an allen key that's going through there and then I will tighten that up to again what I think is tight enough okay I've tightened them in now I'm not going to be able to So this is what I'm going to do, I'm going to get my vernier gauge, okay, so that is how far out my bearing sticks, or well, my adjuster sticks on that side, oh. okay, well I guessed it, I hope I was going to adjust it, but I've actually got it right on both sides. I just, just guessed it. Okay, so both those adjusters are the same amount out on either side. I'll check it again while I'm off camera, but it's the first time I checked it, I actually just guessed those. Uh, and then if I'm happy that they are both accurate and I'm doing it with both hands, I will put the lock nuts on. That's it. So you put your Allen in there to hold your internal tight. Well, stop it from moving once you've set it and then you tighten up that one there to lock it where it is. Same on the other side. Pop that in there and then lock that off. And there is no play at all. Goes up and down lovely. No play side to side. So what's left to do now is to juggle that um, rubber boot back on and put it all back together. Got my bevel drive back on. I'm just about to put the boot wheel on. Ah, oh, I think I've just figured out what I've... The sound goes from good to bad uh, on my videos and I've just noticed that I hold it over the microphone which probably doesn't help. But on the other side, it's the stop button. So, oh, sorry about that. I will get a handle or something like that to fix it. Anyway, back to motorbikes. So, 
I don't expect. I'll turn around so you can see my sweating face because I'm just sweating a bit. Um, I don't expect you to have thought about this as carefully as I do, but I don't think I'll be the only person to have considered if the back end on that was super sloppy because those two bearings, shims were missing or spaces, whatever you want to call them. They were missing and the back end was flying around. I think there's every chance that that gearbox output shaft bearing is stuffed because the output shaft on the bearing, uh, on the gearbox will have been going left to right and up and down all over the shop because the back end was. So, you know, I don't know. I won't find out until I ride the thing, but I actually expect there to be more trouble. So just in case anyone's thinking, mm -hmm, wait until you see Professor Spanner. It's not going to be a $50 fix. I don't actually expect it to be a $50 fix. Uh, I expect there's something to be up with that gearbox, but that's okay. I don't. I like doing it, so meh. So that's where I'm up. That's where I'm up to. Now, I'm just going to want to show you something. And I've got to be honest, I'm not 100%. But I had a go at bleeding the brakes upon this when it was on its center stand, and they wouldn't bleed up. And I didn't know why. And I thought, oh God, I'm gonna need new seal kits and everything like this. And then I found this. And then I realized that it's off the ground. So there is no weight, no weight. You can put your fingers underneath it. There's no weight. The back wheel is in the air. Most importantly, the back wheel has no traction. And while the back wheel has no traction, it looks like the back wheel has no brakes. The only time I've seen a system like this before, which I, <laughs> only because it happens to be the only one that I've ever come across, was in the Toyota Hiace. Brake proportioning valves, I believe, are actually super common in cars, or vans in particular, so that when you've got no weight in the back, you don't need the same braking efficiency as when you've got a, a ton in the cargo area. Obviously, you need your back brakes to come on. You know, they're fine. And your back wheel, wheel and your back tires are never going to let go when you've got a ton in the back. So you're always going to have traction. I've never seen, not traction, con oh, is it traction control? It's not a million miles away from traction control, you know. It, it's not a not in a, the way that we all think in terms of... Um, yeah, obviously electronic traction control, but oh, hang on. Right. When there's weight on the back end, that spring and this valve is closed. And I reckon when you've got some weight on this back end, i.e. it's off the stand and, and you're sitting on it, I think you'll be allowed to use the back brakes, but not until preventing the back wheel brakes from locking because all the weight's thrown to the front of the bike when you brake. But as soon as that back wheel loses any weight on it, it's the precursor to it losing grip, which it won't do because the back brake won't lock under heavy braking. So that strikes me as pretty darn good. If I'm right, I could be wrong, but that looks to me like a brake proportioning valve. Uh, we'll see. So, a lot of the back end back on, tightened up. The whole thing won't be super tight until I've got the um, foot pegs in because they um, hold the frame together just there. But there is no play in this at all. And I just want to say on behalf of myself, if anyone's taken any offence at the really, really bad Italian accent, um, please don't have me whacked, please.